This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and this is the HTC Fuse offered by AT&T. This is yet another HTC Touch Pro variant. AT&T wisely decided to give it a new name to avoid confusion, but this is very similar to the Sprint Touch Pro that we have right here. You can see they're nearly identical in size. The Sprint Touch Pro is just a teeny bit taller. This one keeps the diamond faceted back. The original HTC diamond was famous for and unlike the US 3G diamond offered by Best Buy, this is the unlocked version with AT&T 3G, they went with a matte surface here because of the fingerprint issue, but AT&T brought back the shiny black plastic, and yes, this is a fingerprint magnet. In terms of thickness, the keyboard adds a bit. This is the keyboard. Unlike the Sprint version and the European version, there is no dedicated number row up here. AT&T decided to go with the embedded number pad, so you're going to have to hit the function key first before hitting a number. A little annoying for dialing numbers and a little less easy to enter things like masked password fields that use numbers. But you do get several dedicated punctuation symbols up here. We have the, the at symbol for email, dash, parenthesis, handy things like that. And I do like that there's a Windows Start menu key here and an OK key, which we don't have on the Sprint version. Just for comparison, what we about the Sprint. So you can see both keyboards side by side. For the keyboarded versions of the HTC Touch devices, when you open the keyboard there's about a one second delay and then you'll see the display switch to landscape mode and there's a quick launcher here. This is much like the one that's also used on the unlocked version and on the sprint version and instead of seeing the same touch flow home screen you see in portrait mode you get a specialized launcher over here and that has shortcuts to email, messages, bookmarks, web search, calendar tasks, notes, and contacts. You can also bring up phone right here and it gives you an on-screen dialer which is pretty handy because as I mentioned you have to use the FN keys to use the embedded numeric keys here on the keypad. Touch Pro has a pretty firm slider. You can hear it kind of slamming back into place. In fact, it's spring-loaded, so there's a lot of pressure there. You have call, send, and end buttons, a back button, and a home button, just like we have on the, all the HTC Touch Pro and Touch Diamond variants. There are very few buttons other than that. We have the volume up-down rocker here and AT&T's very large push-to-talk button which is the only button that actually protrudes a little bit. It's a little dark and hard to see, but this one is rubbery and it sticks out. Unfortunately, that button is not remappable. So if you don't use push, don't, so if you don't use push to talk and you'd rather use it for the camera key, you can't unless you want to edit the registry. Power button is up top, just like it is on all the other Touch Pro family Raphael models. Sync port is down here, the reset hole. Here's your stylus. It's magnetic, so it'll pop right back into place like that, and it will also automatically open up the notes application if you're in a call and turn the screen on, which is handy because the screen does turn off when you initiate a call. We have TouchFlow 3D here. That's HTC's cool new user interface on a VGA display. On all the other Diamond and Touch Pro variants that we've seen, the theme is black, which goes really well with, well, the primarily black device. For some reason, AT&T went with this kind of, well, gray. <laughs> that is what it is. There is there is no way to change it in normal settings. If you want to hack the registry or try third-party utilities to change that, then you should be able to. AT&T has added their own application tab here. Instead of putting all their own branded apps scattered here and there. They just plop them all in one tab, which is nice. You can use them if you want, get them to them quickly, or otherwise ignore them. So we have shortcuts for AT&T Music, which is really a Napster back service shopping. MediaNet, which is a MediaNet homepage uh, using the Opera web browser. Singular Video, now called Cellular Video, since they rebranded to AT&T. Let's take a look at that. That runs through Opera Mobile. Usually CV on a Windows Mobile device runs through the web browser and is handled by Windows Media Player Mobile and it's kind of a rough handoff. In this case, HTC Streaming Player is going to handle it and it does a much better job.
Also on the AT&T tab is AT&T Navigator. This is Telenav. It's turn-by-turn -turn directions. It requires a data connection because the maps and the directions are downloaded in real time over the air, over the 3G or the edge connection if you're not in the 3G area. It does a great job of giving directions. Even if you don't intend to use this service, download and install Navigator because it, it enables a GPS and then you'll be able to use it for other third-party programs like Garmin XT or Google Maps or Windows Live Search. So we'll take a look at a map right now, our current location. The GPS is pretty slow at getting a fix first time around. So here we are in map view. It took quite a while to get a cold fix. Actually, we had to bring the unit outdoors for it to get a fix and find us. Currently, we're on the second story of a building about eight feet from a large window. So this fella is not the best at grabbing a fix. We've got the usual contact screen here. You can flick through your contacts. This is just the, the built-in AT&T assistance numbers. We haven't put our stuff on here. You've got email, SMS, threaded style, just like you have on all the other HTC Touch. Flow 3D phones. So let's take a look at the Internet tab. We've got the shortcut uh, Media Net Home using the Opera 9.5 browser. Excellent browser. That's good. A whole bunch of other pre insorted favorites here. You can add your own. Glaringly missing is the YouTube shortcut and the YouTube player icon uh, from this phone. Happily, it is here. It's in the Windows directory. If you use the File Manager, you can find it and create a shortcut to some place where you can find it which we did. So let's take a look at our programs group and scroll down to YouTube player icon that we've created. Here we'll just pick a random video and see how it plays. Generally speaking, the quality on YouTube is much better than at and CV content. Also on the AT&T tab, they have a whole slew of demo games, which you can try out and buy if you like. We'll take a look at Ms. Pac-Man. Game does not use the D-pad, so you're going to have to use the stylus for your fingers if you want to play. Probably isn't such a bad thing since this device has a very non-traditional D-pad. Like all the HTC Touch devices that have come out this year, the AT&T Fuse comes with the wonderful Opera 9.5 web browser, which gives you a very desktop-like experience. So let's visit our website so you can see how it renders what load times are like. Opera gives you not a complete 100% page overview mode, but it gives you a kind of shrunk down view so you can get an idea of what the page layout looks like and where you might want to go. And now that it's done, you can see. Let's load our home page, no problem. It scrolls very quickly. There's no side to side scrolling necessary because it does quite a good job of reformatting the page narrow. On the AT&T version, it's interesting to see that banner ads aren't loading while they do on the Sprint version and often on the unlocked version. You can double tap to zoom in on text and just tap on a link to go to another page. And for those who just want something quick and dirty and not as pretty, there is also the standard Internet Explorer mobile that comes with every Windows mobile device. And you can put your own third-party browser on here. Netfront 3.5 Technical Preview Works finds Skyfire is having problems right now. I think they will issue with the VGA display on the Touch Diamond and the Touch Pro, the U.S. versions at least, and hopefully we'll see an update. 